Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're starting a new chapter for electrical engineering. It's about capacitors and how capacitors work in electrical circuits. But first, a basic about capacitors. What is a capacitor? It's in simple terms two metal plates that are side by side with a very small distance between them. And typically, there's dielectrics between the plates, or it could simply be air between the plates. So the simple version would be that we simply have air between the plates. We then connect a battery or a voltage source to either side of the plates. We have the positive side of the battery on one side of the plate, the negative side of the battery connected to the other side, to, to the other plate, I should say. And the potential across the battery drives current to one side of the capacitor, filling that capacitor with charge. Now the convention is that it drives positive charge to the capacitor, and all these positive charges then repel the positive charges that are here, which then get pushed away because the repulsive force is here and are attracted to the negative end of the battery. So positive charges then move away from this plate, causing this plate then to become negatively charged. It turns out that the excess of positive charges on one plate is equal to the lack of positive charges on the other plate, therefore the excess of negative charges on this plate. So we typically say that this side is positively charged and this side is negatively charged, or it has positive charge on this side and it has negative charge on that side. The capacitance of a capacitor can be defined in two ways. The first way that it can be defined is that it's simply a ratio of the amount of charge that collects on the plate divided by the voltage that drives that charge onto the plate. Now what happens here is that that ratio is known as the capacitance of the capacitor. If there's a bigger capacitor, if the plates are bigger, and usually the capacitance does depend upon the size of the plates, then you can see that more charge can be collected per the amount of voltage that drives the charge on there, therefore you have a larger capacitance. So the capacitance is simply the amount of charge you can collect on the plates relative to the amount of voltage you use to drive that charge on there. You can also calculate the capacitance of a capacitor using its physical dimensions. It turns out that capacitance can also be defined as some constants, E sub naught, which is defined right here, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared, multiplied times the area of the plates divided by the distance between them. So it's a simple formula. The capacitance of a capacitor is simply proportional to how big the plates are. The bigger the plates, the more charge you can collect, and proportional to the distance between them. The smaller the distance, the greater the capacitance, because then the interaction between the positive and negative charges is greater, and you can have a stronger electric field between them. And yes, the capacitance then does depend on the strength of the electric field. Also notice that in this case, since there's air between the plates, we use the constant epsilon sub naught. Now the units for capacitance is called the ferret. So units wise, we can define one ferret, we say one F, standing for ferret, that comes after the name Faraday, and that is equal to the ratio of one coulomb per one volt. In other words, if you apply a potential difference of one volt across a capacitor, and the capacitor collects one coulomb of charge due to that, then the capacitance of the capacitor will be one ferret. Now, one ferret capacitor is not a typical capacitor. Typically, capacitors are much smaller than that, and it holds fractions of a coulomb when you apply volts across them. And so typically, we talk about microfarads, or even nanofarads, or even picofarads. So these are the typical size capacitors you'll find in most circuitry. So we talk about microfarads, nanofarads, picofarads, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 9, or 10 to the minus 12 farads. Now let's talk about the capacitor in terms of the electric field between the capacitor plates. Because there's a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other side, we will have an electric field between the plates. And of course, the direction of the electric field is from the positive charge to the negative charge. Now if we think about it this way, let's say that we have a charge or a plate here that has positive charge on it. There will be an electric field emanating away from that plate. Now the magnitude of the electric field can be defined as the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught. Now of course the charge density is the charge per unit area, so this can be written as the charge on the plate Q divided by epsilon sub naught 
times the area because the charge density is simply the charge per unit area. Now there's also a relationship between voltage and electric field. We know that the, electric, the voltage is equal to the product of the strength of the electric field times the distance between the two points for which we want to know the potential difference. So if we want to calculate the potential difference here between the plates, we can relate that to the strength of the electric field. And so the potential difference V is simply E times D. And since the strength of the electric field is equal to Q divided by epsilon sub naught times A, we can write this as Q divided by epsilon sub naught times A times the distance between the plates. Now, if we go back to the definition of the capacitance here, let's go ahead and solve for the ratio of Q divided by V. So here we can say that V is equal to Q divided by epsilon sub naught A times D. And now we want to turn that into a ratio of Q divided by V. So we put the V here and we put everything else on the other side. So we get Q divided by V by bringing the V underneath the Q, moving this across over here, that is epsilon sub naught times A divided by D. So Q is Q over V is epsilon sub naught A divided by D, which is the same as the capacitance of the capacitor plate. So what we've done now is we've shown that the capacitance can be defined as simply the ratio of the charge divided by the voltage across the plates, and we can also call it, name it in terms of the epsilon sub naught times A divided by D. This equation here is the capacitance according to the physical dimensions of the capacitor. This definition of the capacitance there is simply in terms of the ratio of the charge across the plates divided by the voltage. That's the basic concept of what a capacitor is. This is how we define capacitance in terms of charge and voltage, and this is how we define the capacitance in terms of physical dimensions of the capacitor. And that's how it's done.